Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for the Modern Survivalist and this is a video replying to actually several questions I get through Instagram which is Fairfile 308 the link for my Instagram account is going to be over there below and it's regarding about different alternatives for self-defense when firearms are not an option. I guess that most people watching this channel especially from the US do have some kind of firearm but you'd be surprised by how many of people out there actually don't. It's quite common, not only in the United States, but other parts of the world that people just do not have a gun. And I insist on this all the time, even if it's just a double barrel shotgun, even if it's just a, a, an old double barrel shotgun that you have, a gun, any gun is always going to be better than having no gun at all. I mean, even single shot shotguns or double barrels, these are used all the time in different self-defense situations and quite more effectively than most people think. It's not that you always need a, a, a Glock or an AR or something more a high tech, more capacity, sure, you know, we can talk all day about how that's better and it usually is a better idea whenever that's possible but the gap between having a firearm or not having at all that's huge now having said all that let's get this out of the way and talk about we okay well but what, what if I don't well if you don't these are some of the alternatives and I get lots of questions somewhat on the same topic uh, what about a crossbow what about a bow and arrow uh, what about an air gun what about uh, pneumatic weapons that you know shoot these little plastic or rubber balls and such I get it you know there's lots of, of stuff out there I'm pretty fond of the idea of, of pepper spray I think it's a lot more useful than sometimes people give it credit for uh, it's actually seems like a, a bit alternative that some of the you know some the taser failures that we've seen so often pepper spray does work as a great deterrent but when it comes down to it if you cannot have a, a firearm some blade some knife some uh, weapon that can be used effectively comes into play here. Uh, keeping this stuff in mind, I've addressed quite a bit about this in my book Street Survival Skills. Uh, here I go more into detail as of some of these alternatives using improvised weapons or you know fighting in other ways, either using a gun or when you don't have one, you know, just blades or improvised uh, weapons of some other nature. I mean, that's the kind of thing I cover mostly here. And for the economics collab stuff yes my first book so what is it that you can get in terms of what's available in your household the question I got that inspired me for, for this video was which is gonna be better a, a tomahawk or, or a knife these are things that come into mind and these are both actually great options um, much better than some of the other um, I don't know how to explain it more of the romanticized stuff like nunchucks or some of these uh, um, uh, Far East martial art weapons and such that sometimes they, they sound great but when it comes down to it they're not not nearly as effective as some of the more basic things so when it comes down to it I don't have a tomahawk this is actually just a small hatchet but it kind of illustrates the point very well this is actually very good this is actually very effective it's been used for hundreds of years in warfare uh, a small hand axe and man yes it's gonna be cutting limb fingers bone it's gonna be crushing it is an effective weapon now the thing that I see especially when you're comparing this to a you know, large ish knife or even a, a small machete or a, basically a, a bladed weapon the thing about it is you're gonna be using it and I'm gonna be assuming that people watching this channel uh, or you know the average guy watching this is not some martial artist that's spending three four five hours a day training with bladed weapons or impact weapons I'm looking mostly at you know average folk that just want to have something for self-defense maybe they have some limited training maybe they know a little bit of martial arts or they took a few classes uh, on using a knife but in general it's definitely not the most common thing and if people did some of it it's definitely not something that most people will focus on on pretty much you know weekly basis okay so when it comes down to it the advantage that you have with, with a, a hatchet uh, a tomahawk is that you have a lot of weight focus here it's gonna be cutting with a lot of force anything that gets in its in its path in the arc when you wield it is it gonna be in trouble but having said that the actual cutting liner surface is limited to this if I'm comparing it to this this is my kitchen knife this is from Ikea uh, it's in my uh, in my kitchen's drawer right now look at the difference in terms of how much cutting 
line or surface I have. You know, I'm going to be cutting a lot more with this than with this. Is this going to be putting more force into whatever it hits? Sure, it's intended for splitting wood. And the, the tomahawk is intended mostly as a fighting weapon. In either way, these are going to be putting a lot of, of damage, of, of hurt in whatever it makes contact. But it has to make contact with that. And it's going to be slower to wield. It's going to be requiring more force. And you see that you have this shaft here, which you, if you time it correctly, someone can grab this here, 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 somewhere along the the handle, it may be grabbed and you know pried away from you. Especially if there's a, a disproportionate amount of force, per, uh, the defender versus the attacker, that's kind of likely to happen. If it's a, a woman defending herself from a uh, from a man or a smaller frame guy, that's always a possibility. That is not as likely to happen with a knife. With a knife, you have less places to grab and get hold of. Anything you get into contact here, you're gonna be getting cut. My advice though, if you're looking to get a, a, a knife for you know, what, home defense, whatever is the case, uh, keep it for that role. Don't use uh, the same kitchen knife that's likely to be not very sharp when you need it, and maybe not even in a, in a handy location. Try having it specifically for that if you're gonna be limited to a, a, a knife for self-defense. But I, I am very fond of this chef knife, the, the butcher's knife. I don't want to make this video super long, but if you go back even to the um, the Bowie knife, the original Bowie knife was actually very similar to something like this. It was a, a, actually a butcher's knife. Okay, so it has a long straight back knife with a you know nice tip, and it was basically a big butcher's knife, and that's what was used in the in the sandbar fight. All right. So it can be used quite effectively, any large blade. Now I would focus also not only on the cutting um, aspect of, of your knife, but also the tip. The tip is really where it's at in terms of how effective a knife is. There's different studies, you know, anything from 30, 40 percent more likely to uh, incapacitate stab wounds versus the slashing ones. Here's where I'd like to focus at least a little bit on the aspect of what is it that incapacitates people. I mean, if you're in a fight, someone is trying to hurt you, you're fighting for your life, and you're swinging away with this, sure, someone will bring out a, a, a hand, an arm, anything, you're going to be chopping. It's going to be hurting a lot. It's going to be bleeding a lot. Eventually, depending on where you cut, that person may not be able to continue fighting. But we see the statistics and statistics say that piercing is where it's at. When you stab, you're going to be doing different things. Not only is it going to be bleeding, anything that looks uh, into um, stabbing in this regard, what is this? This is a bayonet, right? We all agree on that. The idea of the bayonet is not to slash away and cut. These are often not even sharp. It is a pokey thing. It is a spear. A bayonet is intended, especially these old ones were intended to convert your Mauser rifle or any other type of rifle was intended to convert that rifle into a spear. Historically, the spear has always been our best weapon. Why is it? Why is it that? I, I mean, in my opinion, why is that's more of a proven weapon, even more than this. And this is great. I mean, this has been used in warfare. Here is where we, we could, again, try not to make the video super long, but in terms of warfare, as a fighting, as a, as a, as a soldier's weapon in the battlefield, you're swinging away with this. Anything that gets into contact, you're going to be seeing fingers fly, hands, limbs being chopped, you know, wounds to the head. But you're basically looking at incapacitating a number of, of people. Now, Stabbing is where you're going to be more effective, and it's because of a simple physiological aspect of human beings. We have our guy here, I'm going to be drawing this very fast, so keep that in mind. So we, we have our guy here standing, and he has a weapon, he has a, you know, a knife, he has a gun. Whatever reason, this guy, you want to stop him from hurting you. One of the more effective ways is affecting this area. Now, when we are training with firearms, we learn to what? Shoot to the center. Okay, that is because of, you know, you're going to be having your the heart here. You're going to be having, you know, the central nervous system going up to the brain. So anything you're going to be hitting here with a bullet, 
that tends to be quite effective. Now, when it comes to these, when it comes to stabbing, when it comes to bandage, when it comes to spears, what you're looking at is a little bit different. You're looking to cause this system, the respiratory system, to collapse. And you do that by, if we have a guy's chest here, he's breathing, he has his, his lungs, diaphragm, and this needs to be vacuum sealed. When you breathe in, this goes down and these get filled with air. But if there's a hole here or here or anywhere in the chest, you have pneumothorax. You have air flowing into this hole and this is not working. This is actually collapsing. The lung collapsed. And if you penetrate the lung as well, the lung itself is going to be filled up with blood. All right. So these are all things that you um, are looking in terms of using what man has been using for literally hundreds of thousands of years. The dude with a spear is basically that. The spear is intended to do this. Of course, if you stab someone with a spear through the heart, that's going to be effective. If you stab someone with a spear through the neck, but mostly your large target is here. Still very much the same thing. You're stabbing here to the chest, to the torso, all right? Because that's how you make people not able to breathe anymore. In fact, we talked before about the bayonet, about the, the blood groove and all the mysticism theories and all the bullshit going on. And actually some of the facts of, as of how these are made and how this is intended to be lightened. One more thing to keep in mind is that these are intended to let what air go in. And it's not going to be putting like air in the blood system. No, this is intended among other things, lightweight, you know, more rigidity for weight ratio and all of this stuff. There's, this is actually mathematically calculated just like in any a T or double T or I or double I beam. But this is going to be letting, yeah, when someone gets stabbed with this, if, if you get a, a bayonet through your chest, your immediate reaction will be, uh, and when you do that, air is going to be flowing in because that lung is not going to be working for you anymore because your diaphragm is trying to allow you to breathe in, but there's a hole in your chest. And this, if this thing is stuck in your chest, there's a good chance that air will quickly flow in through there and make things even worse. I mean, getting stabbed with anything or getting shot with anything to the chest will have somewhat of the same effect. But skin is surprisingly flexible. Uh, flexible. It's almost like rubber. It tends to sh um, close itself around anything. You know, the, the thing you probably heard a million times. If you get you know something stabbed through your skin or what, leave it there. Don't pull it out. As long as you don't pull it out, there's a good chance that skin is going to be doing its job, stealing as well as it can around that. Um, that weapon or, or tree branch or piece of metal or whatever that went into your into your body and keeping you from bleeding out or keep, keeping you from not being able to breathe. That's what you're trying to do when you leave that there and go to an you know, emergency room or doctor or whatever is people are going to be helping you out. This is specifically intended, among other things, to avoid that from happening. When you have this stuck in your chest, even if you leave it there, the bayonet is going to be letting air into your whatever, whatever your thoracic cavity, right? And that's basically what you're looking at when when you have a knife. When you have the knife, you could use it for slashing, sure, but mostly stabbing. This is where you can really use. I mean, I describe a couple techniques here in the book, but basically keeping this close to yourself, you keep all of this towards your attacker, and you can quickly flip it up for anyone you know trying to you know bash you or just you know go over you. You can bring this up and being used very effectively as a stabbing weapon. And that with such a length of a blade will not be pleasant, will not go well for whoever is trying to bring you down. Of course, we're keeping this in mind in terms of does he have a firearm? How well do I know how to use my, my weapon? All of this comes into effect. But between these two basically guys, I'm more uh, towards the, the blade, the big knife. It may be a, a machete. Sure, that, that's fine too. I'm very fond of the 
cold steel Bowie machete, which is a, the Bowie machete is a, a great alternative because you have both. You have a very light, fast uh, blade. It's gonna be chopping very well and you have a great tip, penetrating very well. But this you can find in any store, you probably find it already in most households. Folks, it's gonna be all for now. See you in the next video. Have an awesome day. Take care.